welcome to the Having It All podcast, the show about what it takes to live an abundant, loving life. My name is Matthew Bivens, and each week I'm helping you get out of your head so that you can truly have it all. Let's do it. What's going on, beautiful people? Welcome to the Having It All podcast. I am very, very excited that you are here with me today to dig into another powerful conversation about what it looks like to live an abundant, loving life. That, ladies and gentlemen, is what Having It All is all about here in this podcast. So, yes, let's do this thing. Today's episode, today's episode is about taboo subjects. Yes. And by taboo subjects, I mean those subjects, those topics that make you feel uncomfortable, the things that you don't want to address in your life, the things that you want to address in your relationships with your partner, with your friends, the stuff that you avoid doing that sits in the back of your mind that you know you need to get into this, but, oh, it makes you feel uncomfortable. That's what we're talking about today. And specifically, I want to address why it's vitally important. If you are playing to have it all, if you are playing to have an abundant loving life, then you must be addressing these taboo topics. So I'm going to talk about that today. And uh, this one is definitely an explicit episode. So just keep that in mind with those you are listening with or around. Uh, I'm just going to allow myself to fully express today. So this one is marked E for explicit. All right. Let's dig into some magic because, you know, part of the uh, one of the byproducts of having it all is creating many more magical moments in your life. And magic in the context of this podcast is when you influence yourself, others or life in an empowering way. So I'm going to share a uh, a really just freaking awesome example of magic from my life that happened yesterday. And then when I'm done telling my story, I encourage you to pause the episode and think about the magic that you've created. Because by doing that, you are connecting with your power, your power as a creator. Because you are creating or co-creating all the different things you're experiencing in your life. And you're creating or choosing how you relate to those experiences. It all sits in your lap. It's all within your power. So, Magical moments are when we just take a step back and think, damn, I am freaking powerful. Yeah. So my magic is a little bit connected to today's topic. It has to do with money. And um, this was a breakdown that led to a breakthrough moment that happened yesterday. So I'm a part of this truly incredible community here in Atlanta called the Your Day Balance Game community. Uh, It's this, the Your Day Balance Game is just an awesome uh, game that I play in the game of health and fitness, uh, it's powered by love and balance. And it's totally unique. I've talked about it a number of times on the show and I've been a big part of this community for a while. So, so, so deep in the community. In fact, that we have a, what we call just the core team, the folks who really drive this thing forward. Um, so if you were thinking of a business, it would kind of be like the advisory board, you know, the people who help set the direction and, and really chart the, the course for the business. And in our case, it's for the Your Day Balance Game organization. And we meet every month. Every month we sit down, we gather, and we talk about what's, you know, the, the big things that are on the table. And a lot of times we talk about the breakdowns that have been happening and the opportunities that we all have. And so one of the opportunities this week uh, in last night's meeting was around money, specifically um, an app that we're developing and each one of the core members had committed to investing a certain amount of money into this app. And so what, what happened with the breakdown was that I had committed to investing uh, money into the app, yet I wasn't keeping my agreement. Instead of being consistent and, and putting money in as I had intended to really hit the number that I said I was going to commit to, I was just throwing a little bit here and there. And at the same time, I was spending or really just investing my money in other places. And how the breakdown came about, it really was a breakdown in my own realization because I was very deeply um, feeling scared about 
putting this money in uh, and it was connected with scarcity. There was a huge scarcity conversation I was having like, man, if I invest this money, you know, the big thing was it's not going to come back to me fast enough. Meaning I'll put this money in, that's money that's leaving my bank account and it's not going to get back into my bank account in a quick enough amount of time and I'm going to lose all my money and then I'm going to do this, I'm going to sell this and you know, you kind of go down that rabbit hole and I went there. And so instead of just being a man of my word and saying, yep, this is what I committed to, I'm going to follow through, I was just putting a little bit here, a little bit there. And so in last night's meeting, we went over our numbers and we really discussed like, okay, where are you at in your investment? And I know the folks who were sitting in that meeting with me and I know the space that they hold for me. And so I just chose to speak up and I said, hey, you know what? Um, I've been having a lot of scarce conversation around my investment and here's what it is. And so I just, just let it all out. I just unpacked all the scarce shit that was going through my mind about putting the money in, where the money is going to go, the lack of faith I was having in myself as a creator and as a, as, a, as a manifester of money, the lack of faith I was having in what we were investing in. The, I had all of this shit come up and it really was a bunch of shit. And all of that got me to a point where I was like, you know what? What would it look like? And this is the fucking magic. This is incredible. I was like, what would it just look like if I were to stroke the check now? Because I have the money. The money was there. What would it look like if I was to stroke the check now? And if you've been paying attention to my my recent episode, especially the one about purpose, I ask myself these questions in my life and I've just developed the 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 character, the the response that if I ask myself a hard question, I answer it and I move. So I knew that once that question popped in my mind, what would it look like for me to just stroke this big check? This big check that I've been so afraid of of stroking. What would it look like if I did that? Like, I knew that I was going to fucking do that. I knew it. So there was this moment and I was in, I was in my silence as the rest of the group was talking about the money stuff. And I was just having an opportunity to deal with the fact that within the next, I didn't know when it was going to happen. The next, you know, couple of minutes, couple of hours, I was about to drop thousands and thousands of dollars on this thing. So I was like, let me get cool with this. And what was beautiful about it is Sarah is is a part of this core team as well. And she also committed money to the app. And there was this part of me that was like, I'm going to do this. And I know Sarah is too, because she was doing the same thing I was doing, putting a little bit here, putting a little bit there. And I look over and I see Sarah on her phone in, in a conversation with, with the woman who manages all the finances. She's a CFO. And I was like, Sarah's fucking investing right now. Like in that moment, as I'm getting, getting comfortable and like getting clear for myself that I'm about to stroke this big check, my queen is over there having the same conversation in her head. And she's like, I'm about to stroke this big check. And she went ahead and did it. So simultaneously, both of us went through that process of dealing with those scarce feelings, running every single scenario of what's going to happen after we invest this money. And then getting to the other side of that fear and asking ourselves, you know what, what would happen if we just did it? And both deciding in that moment that we were about to take this leap of faith, because that's what it was, a leap of faith. And so I'm sitting there and I'm watching her. I'm like, she's fucking doing it. And as the conversation came back around to me, I was like, I'm about to invest. Let's do this. And I said, Sarah, it looked like you were doing it right now. And she just looked at me and nodded. And I'm like, that's my queen. You know what I mean? Like, that's, that's what I'm playing for. Like for her and I to be so synced up in this thing that no matter what fears come up, because the money fear is big for her too. It's like, no matter what fears come up, I know she's about to step in powerfully. I know that I'm going to step in powerfully. And then for both of us to arrive at that at the same moment last night and stroke that check and just take that leap of faith and just be like, you know what? It's going to come back a thousandfold. Like that was so magical. So magical, everybody. I mean, oh, it's an incredible feeling. And what I didn't expect was the feeling of calm that swept over me once I made my decision. It was like once I decided within me that this was going to happen, like I just felt at peace. 
And that piece was really, for me, a huge breakthrough moment in my own money conversation, in my own scarcity conversation, because I was like, you know what? Of course it's coming back. That money is flowing back to me right in this moment. And I am so worthy of it. I am worthy of that money flowing into me because I am going to be able to manage it in a mature way. I'm going to be able to multiply that money that comes back to me. And it was this supreme feeling of peace and calm. And it was incredibly magical. And so it's, it's been uh, less than 24 hours. And, you know, I've, I've looked at the bank account and been like, all right, cool. Let's flow. And it's, it's, it really is, I'm telling you, everybody, it's that leap of faith. It's that leap of faith. You know, I talk about that so often where it's like, I don't see, like you're standing on a cliff and you're looking down. You're like, I don't see the bridge. I don't see the pathway. But I believe that if I step off, it's going to appear. And so you step off. I always bring up Indiana Jones. There's that scene in Indiana Jones where he's at that leap of faith. I think it's the, uh, I think it's La- Last Crusade. And he's standing on the edge. And he's looking down. And he's like, I have to get across this, this, this canyon, but there's no way. And he hears his father's voice in his head. And he remembers what his father talked to him about, faith. And so he literally steps off the edge and what appears under his foot after he took the leap. Not before, but after. What appeared was the path. And every leap of faith is a magical moment because you're influencing yourself in an empowering way. And almost every leap of faith is going to come with fear, a crazy amount of fear. The bigger the leap, the bigger the fear. I'm telling you, my money stories run deep. That money scarcity has run deep in me, and I've been doing a lot of work on it over the past several years, a lot of work to, to, to undo those beliefs I have about money, my own worth, my own value, my own trustworthiness, my own ability to create. And even with all that work I've been doing, there's still a hell of a lot more work to do. And so that leap of faith last night was big. And that's why this stuff is so beautifully connected with these taboo topics. Because I'm going to get into it. I mean, I'm skipping over a few things. Normally I, I talk about other stuff before, but we'll just flow. Because... One of the taboo topics is money. That's one of the things that people don't want to talk about. They don't want to talk about money. Don't ask somebody about how much money they make. Don't ask somebody about where they're spending their money. Don't ask somebody about how much debt they have. It's just one of those things that we choose to avoid, and we choose to avoid it out of fear. And so what happens when we avoid those things is they begin to control us. Those things that we avoid those things that we fear, those things that we push down and try to repress, they end up controlling us. And they control us because the moment that we're presented with it, our emotions get hijacked. We're now in fear mode. We're now in scarce mode. We're now in judgment mode. We're now in defensive mode. That is not freedom. That's not freedom. When when, when something is presented to you, like right now, you might be feeling super nervous and anxious about money because I'm talking about money right now. Freedom is to be able to look at any topic and say, cool, let's dig in. I'm open. Let's go. That's a part of freedom to me. The opposite of that is, no, 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 I don't want to talk about that. No, no, because I don't like the way it makes me feel. I don't like the things that come up. No, 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 no. You are a slave to that topic. That topic is controlling you. And so that's why we're going to dig into this taboo stuff. Because part of having it all, part of living an abundant, loving life is being free, free from those fears, free from those unhealthy attachments, free from that scarcity, free from the judgments, free from the defensiveness that comes up when somebody even hints at one of those taboo topics. So I'll wrap up this magic because I know I'm going off, but it was so big and so beautiful. And I know that that breakdown is what created the breakthrough. And so 
I've experienced that so many times in my life. Like I'm so willing to go through breakdowns because of the breakthrough on the other side. And because of that feeling when you hit that breakthrough, it's literally a level up. It's like in, I used to play Super Mario when I was little. And when you start off the game, you're like this little tiny Mario. And then you get one of the mushrooms and what happens? Do, 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 do. You level up. That happens every time you go from a breakdown to a breakthrough. Do, 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 do. Level up. And so I felt that level up happen last night and it's a beautiful thing. And so I'm like, great, where's the next opportunity for breakdown? Let's just step into it. I know it's uncomfortable and it sucks and all that, but that breakthrough is beautiful and magical. And that connects me more strongly with my abundant loving life and what I'm playing for. So bring it on. So, okay, that was my magic, everybody. I know it was long, but it was worth it. I'm opening it up for you now to pause the episode if you feel inspired and just reflect what magic have you created? How have you influenced yourself? How have you influenced others? How have you influenced life? Think about your magic and then we will move on to listener love. Today's listener love goes out to Gail. Gail, I appreciate you so much for listening to the podcast, for investing that time, investing those minutes and those hours because that is stuff that you don't get back, you know? And so I'm, I'm so grateful that you would invest that time connecting to the message of having it all and that you would take some time to reach out to me on Instagram. I love it. We're having a great conversation. I appreciate your questions. I appreciate your, your openness. Um, you're wanting to explore. You know, that's what I get when, when you ask questions. It's like, cool, you're looking to expand and see things in a new way and, you know, pick up new beliefs and receive feedback. So I appreciate all that. Um, that's, that to me is you living the mission of the podcast. Like, like living it, not just listening, but living it. And that's a beautiful thing. So Gail, thank you so much. If you want to be like Gail, you can connect with me on Instagram, Matthew underscore Bivens. We can get to some cool conversations there. Hit me up with questions you have, any sort of shout outs, just saying, hey, um, topic suggestions. I love those. Let's do some more topic suggestions so that I can be uh, make, creating episodes that are specific to you, specific to your scenario or specific to what you want to hear. You can also hit me up at mattcbivens at gmail.com. Two ways to get in touch with me, and I would love to connect. All right, before we go into taboo topics and kind of pick up the conversation again, I wanted to announce to everybody that right now I am accepting one-on-one -on -one coaching applications. The application is open. You can go fill it out and uh, potentially work with me one-on-one -on -one and you know, my, my mission, my mission with my business, with my podcast, with everything that I share here is really to help you answer your inner call to live with more purpose, confidence, abundance, and love. That's what is it. That's what it is to help you answer that call. Like if that call is really strong within you and you want to answer it, let's connect. Because you know what? I've had those internal conversations of man, I know there's just more meant for me. I know that I'm just scratching the surface of, of who I can be. I know that I can attract and I can create and I can show up powerfully and I, I know all that stuff. I just don't know how to do it. I don't know how to get to the next level. And quite frankly, like this scares the shit out of me. The thought of really going for it scares the shit out of me. Like those were the conversations that I had for years and years and years. And that I had a lot of fear that really kept me from moving past conversation. But slowly, I started confronting those fears. And then the momentum picked up. And I started smashing through those fears. And I watched my life transform. My life across the board transform. My relationships changed. They became so much more connected, so much more rewarding. My business transformed. It became so much more fulfilling and profitable my health improved my physical health my emotional health like physically my baseline for just where i'm playing at physically is so far beyond where i was in the quote-unquote prime because i tell you your prime is in your 20s or some crap like that no it doesn't have to be i'm so far beyond that now and all of that has happened because i really went in i really went in on myself 
And so as a balanced lifestyle coach, that's what I help you do. I help hold that space. I bring guidance. I bring energy. I bring conversation. I bring accountability. I bring tools. I bring feedback. I bring love. All of it so that you can become the version of you that you truly desire. And so that you can create the life that you fucking love on all levels. Not just in your bank account. Not just in your bedroom. On all levels. So if, if you're feeling stirred and you want to potentially talk about working, go fill out the coaching application. It's a number of questions that helps me get to know you better. And then once you receive the application, we'll set up the call for us to have a one-on-one chat. You can go to matthewbivens.com slash coaching, matthewbivens.com slash coaching. Go there. And, you know, I only work with a limited number of people at a time. Reason being, I pour a lot into each one of the folks I work with. Like I give a lot, I pour a lot of myself. And, you know, honestly, I'm playing to be the model of balanced living. Balance between the P and the PC, the performance and the performance capacity. I'm playing to be that model. So I don't take on dozens and dozens of people because then I wouldn't be in my balance. That wouldn't be my sweet spot. So spaces are limited. Go ahead and apply today, matthewbivens.com slash coaching. And I definitely look forward to helping you truly create your abundant loving life going to be awesome. Okay. Let's dig into this episode. I know I shared so much stuff during magic. And you know, sometimes I just get on a roll. And that's what that was. I really just got on a roll and um but I wanted I want to like almost take a step back and then dive in deep again. Because that conversation that went down in my house last night, that meeting, you know, we talked about a couple of those taboo subjects. The one that I already mentioned was money and the other one was sex. We talked about money and sex. And after that conversation, I really became incredibly grateful for the people that I have in my life and the circles that I sit in where we can dig into taboo. And I use that with quotes, like taboo topics. And because honestly, I'm playing for a life where there is no taboo topics. Talk about anything. I don't care with anybody because like I said, I don't want any of that stuff to have that power over me, to have that influence over me. No, screw that. I want to have confronted all those fears, all those little things that make me uncomfortable about money and sex and religion and politics and race and all that. I want to address it so that I can talk to you about sex the same way I can talk to you about the weather. Yes, that's where I'm at. And so That's what really inspired me to bring this up. Like, can you talk about those things easily without getting massively anxious, without deflecting, without leaving the room, without starting a fight? What topics right now are off the board for you? What topics do you say, nope, we will not address that? Because those are the things that are controlling you. That is where your power is leaking out. And maybe other places too, but definitely there. It's like you have a bucket And the bucket is full of all that amazing power juice that is you, that you have access to. But no, 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 we're not talking about sex. Cool, carve a hole in that bucket. No, 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 we're not going to talk about religion in this house. Okay, cool, carve another hole in that bucket. We're definitely not going to address race. Nope, nope, we're not going to address race. All right, carve a third hole in that bucket. Your power is just leaking out all over the place. So when you can live without that fear, when you can live without that discomfort, when you can live without that judgment, you're free. You're able to now go out and be who you truly want to be, unencumbered, open, authentic. And that's what I'm playing for for you. That's the space that I'm holding. So the five topics that, that really create that taboo feeling in folks, as I already listed, they are sex, big one, money, big one, religion, politics, race. Those are five things that a lot of people have one, if not multiple of those that they don't want to talk about with you. I can just think about this in my family. If I were to go to certain family members, some of those things would be off the table as in terms of discussions. I know that because I've tried, <laughs> I've, I've put things out there to talk and friends as well. And, you know, it's just, and with me, I had certain of those that I wasn't going to talk about. I was not about to talk about sex. No, not in a mature way. I might talk about sex in a very immature way and, and it would be all about, you know, how, how powerful, how, 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 
how much of a Viking man I was, like shit like that. You know what I mean? Like that's how I might paint the picture of myself in the bedroom, but I wouldn't talk about it in a real way. And even as I'm having those bullshit conversations, I'm feeling nervous. Same with money. Never wanted to let anybody know how much money I was truly making, what my actual spending habits were, because I judged them. Because I knew for so long I was spending money without any sort of guidance, any sort of budget, any sort of plan, any sort of framework. It was just wants, 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 wants. Let me put my money towards my wants. No future planning, nothing like that. And so those were my two big topics. But what are they for you? Out of these five topics, which ones do you right now make, do they make you feel anxious? Sex, money, religion, politics, or race? So I share with you one story of my breakthrough. Breakthrough is only possible by addressing where the blockage is. Breakthrough is only possible by you saying, oh my gosh, I get super worked up when I talk about politics. Okay, it's time to, to address that. That's the only opportunity, that's the only way that you're going to create breakthrough in that area is to actually address it. One of the things that has happened to me as a father is that I am now realizing to a greater extent how the paradigms and the beliefs that I have, I can very easily and am easily passing them right on down to Maya. And so when it comes to these taboo topics, when you're choosing not to address something in your life, in your marriage, in your relationship, or you don't want to go there with your kids or whatever, a lot of times what you're doing is you're just passing down the same exact fear-based thinking, fear-based behaving, fear-based living, fear, fear-based viewpoints. You're passing those right down to your kids. You're passing them right along to your friends. You're just keeping that train moving right on down the track. And you know where it, that track leads. It leads to you being a prisoner of those things that you fear. It leads to you having a power loss. It leads to you feeling scarce and judged or any of those things. And so it really hit me as a parent. I was like, man, you know, I definitely did not grow up with, with having, like we didn't have conversations about sex and money in my house. We never talked about that stuff. Sex in particular ne was never discussed. Money was discussed in a way of we don't have money in this moment or there's not enough. So sex was avoided off the table, which made it totally taboo for me, which I know contributed to a lot of different things that I developed over the years around sex, keeping anything sexual very, very secret. My porn watching, very, very secret. The feelings I had for people, very, very secret. You know what I mean? It's like, that's part of what happens when things aren't addressed. You start to pick up the belief that it's wrong or bad to address them. And then with the money, it was just mostly lack of conversation. You know, it's like, can't get this. Don't have enough for that. We need more for this. And, you know, the thing is, like, I, am not, I do not blame my parents for this stuff. I'm, the point is not for me to pass blame onto them and be like, you fucked me up. You didn't talk about sex, and now here I am. I have this sexual issue that's, that's creating all this stuff in my life. That's not the point. Because here's the thing. Your parents do your best. Your guardians do your best. Whoever you grew up with, whatever environment, the people who were around you, they're doing their best. By best, I don't always mean healthy. They're just doing the best that they can with what they have. Their tools. Their frameworks. Maybe they didn't have a podcast like this. Maybe they didn't have the resources that you have access to. And they were doing so much of this stuff on their own. That's what I mean by they're doing their best. And so the point isn't to go back and get frustrated at what was passed down to you. The point is for you to stop the pattern by recognizing that you have the power to choose right now. You have the power to choose love over fear. Choosing love looks like making it a point to address these taboo topics in your life. Are you afraid of money? Okay, then look at your money every day. Have someone else come and look at your money. Share it. Talk about it with someone you trust. Seek guidance. Do whatever the hell you need to do in order to improve or to heal that relationship you have with money. Do you have an issue with race? All right, great. Let's start getting real about that. What's at the core of that issue of race? Let's uncover those beliefs. Let's uncover those stories. 
and figure out what steps you got to take to rewrite them. That's why you know, we're digging into this taboo stuff. That's why we're talking about this right now. There's a, a, a quote that I, I had in my mind and I looked it up. And um, it's the quote goes, those who cannot learn from history are doomed to repeat it. From George, ooh, I'm gonna, I hope I don't mess his last name up, Santayana. He was a philosopher, a poet, a novelist. But he said, those who cannot learn from history are doomed to repeat it. That's exactly what's going to happen if you don't address these things. Because think of the taboo subject that you don't want to talk about. Now think of the last time you had a breakdown around that subject. A breakdown looks like a fight that happened, something went down, you felt massively uncomfortable, whatever it is. It's just a moment where shit did not go the way that you had wanted it to go. Things felt awkward, uncomfortable, whatever. Think about the last time you had a breakdown. Okay, now understand that that breakdown is 1,000% going to happen again in your life, probably in the near future. And then it's going to happen again and again and again. And you're going to have so many breakdowns around that topic in your life until you choose to address it. And if you're in a relationship, right, and you think, okay, well, if there's a breakdown, then we... We split up. Okay, great. Guess what? You're going to attract another person who's going to touch on that same trigger for you. You're going to recreate the same exact thing because if you did not learn from the history, you are going to repeat it. It's not personal. It's not personal. What you need to do is you need to truly learn from your past and then do something to change how you view or perceive your present and your future. That's what we need to do. And so for me, last night with the money, it was like, I'm going to continue to repeat this pattern of feeling massively scarce when it comes to making big investments. And just putting a little bit and saying, yeah, I'll do this, and not being a man of my word. So I'm not living in integrity. I'm being incredibly scarce-minded. I'm sitting like this, the, the, what I was doing was sitting on my conscience. Like I knew it because there's other things I've been spending my money on. An opportunity to go on a trip around in, in November popped up for Sarah and I, and we wanted it. So we jumped on it. Boom, a couple hundred dollars. Bam, right there. That's a couple hundred dollars that I could have put into this financial agreement that I was making. And so that contrast sat with me. Like I wasn't being the man that I wanted to be. And so I was doomed to continue repeating these same patterns of having these breakdowns over money, avoiding looking at my bank account, feeling scarce, feeling like I wasn't worthy, feeling like I'm never going to be able to create the lifestyle that I truly want. All that shit until I broke the pattern. Until you take a leap of faith. So by now, you've got in your mind what your taboo off-limit topics are. And I want to help you address them. I want to help you to start viewing these things as not these incredibly scary monsters that you just have to avoid at all costs and run away from. These things don't have to scare the shit out of you. If you've listened to my podcast, you know that I'm all about confronting fears. That's, that's been a theme throughout my life when it comes to my transformation and my growth and my healing. It's happened when I confront fears. So guess what? That's what you're going to need to do in order to create a more peaceful experience, to create something different in your life in those areas. So where do you start? If it were me, if I were in your shoes, I would pick the biggest, hairiest, scariest taboo topic that you have. Pick it. Maybe it's one of the five that I mentioned. Maybe it's something else that you know you're like, I'm avoiding this like crazy. I don't even like seeing it when it pops up on the bottom of the news ticker. It's like, oh, oh, I'm not going to, nope. Whatever that is, pick the one that's the biggest one. Because as you start to work through that one, even if it's in a tiny way, as the big scary monster starts to get chopped down a little bit, you realize it's not so big and not so scary. And then all the other things that were off limits to you aren't as big or scary either. In business, we, we, we say, eat your frogs first. That means doing the thing that you don't want to do, doing the hardest thing, doing the thing that makes you most uncomfortable and getting it done first. 
So that's that same principle right here. Let's pick the biggest one first. Now, the next thing that I would do is try to think about it as objectively as you possibly can. Because it's your subjectivity that makes it taboo, by definition. Like your subjectivity, your emotions, your beliefs, all that stuff is what make the thing taboo. So let's see if you can think about it from another perspective. How can you possibly think about race from a different perspective? Politics. If you are a staunch Democrat, how can you look at the Republican point of view in a different way? If you hate all Republicans or you hate all Democrats, how can you flip it and look at their point of view? What can you do to look at this topic as objectively as you possibly can? Just to let a tiny little glimmer of light come in that is contrary to what you've been believing. Another thing that I do and I sought out and I created was having a safe space to explore these topics. To explore the topics and to ask questions. Even if it begins as me just being in a conversation about them. Like being in the room. Not participating, but just being in the room and listening. This podcast is an example of that. So what other spaces, what other conversations, what other environments can you get in that address the thing that you're scared of? Maybe it's a meetup group that talks about personal finance. Maybe you have a friend in a different religion and you want to go and participate in one of their services. Just sit in the back and observe. Whatever it is, how can you get into a space where you can explore it, a safe space to explore it? One of the things that I'm incredibly grateful for is the accountability group that I lead. It's called a COI, a Circle of Influence. And it's, it's one of the awesome things that we do in the Orde Balance game. We do these accountability groups. And we have a, a declaration that we, that we share and say at the beginning of each meeting to remind us why we're here, like why we're showing up that night. And the beginning of a declaration goes to abundantly create and hold a space of unconditional love, trust, and transparency. To abundantly create and hold a space of unconditional love, trust, and transparency. That is the type of environment, the type of energy, the type of space that's needed for you to be able to address these taboo topics. Unconditional love, trust, and transparency. So if you're scared as hell about money and have fearful money conversations, don't go in an environment where there's other people who are scared about money. Don't do that. That's not an unconditional space. That's not a space of unconditional love, trust, and transparency. You need to find a place where people are vibing at a higher frequency than you around that topic. Again, podcasts are great. The internet gives us access to these spaces, whether they're podcasts, whether they're Facebook groups, whether they're just online forums. Go and find them and just simply start observing. You don't have to do anything. There's a few Facebook groups I'm a part of. I've never posted one thing. The only click of my mouse I've ever done in that group is to click the join button. And then I'll just read. But it allows me to be in that energy of the topic that I want to explore. And then at a certain time, if I want to put myself out there, I will. I'll ask a question. I'll do whatever I need to do. But in order to make some of these topics not so scary, you got to go and start being around them. It would be awesome to just jump right in and start having a conversation with somebody who who can, who can hold that space for you and just get real and raw and go in the deep end, yeah, that'll lead to breakthrough real quick. But if you're not there, then take advantage of the tools you have in front of you. In the internet, you can be anonymous. You can just listen in your privacy to this podcast. Keep doing that stuff and lean in further. Explore other podcasts that go deeper in topics that are really taboo for you. And just listen in on the conversation. And remember to keep the objective perspective. Just keep yourself open. And when you do choose to step into a new space and you want to actually participate, then step into that space with courage. That's what's required. You got to have courage. You got to share openly. Listen to those new ideas. Take on those new perspectives. That's what I did last night. I'm sitting there going through all this money shit in my mind and I'm like, all right, hey everybody, listen, I want to share with you what's on my mind. That took courage. I was like, damn, I'm about to unpack a lot of stuff that I haven't shared around this particular 
money scarcity I'm having. I was nervous. I was nervous. But I also knew, again, that it was a space of unconditional love, trust, and transparency. So I shared openly. And as soon as I did that, boom, everybody connected. Everybody felt like they got me. Other people started sharing their stuff too. I felt understood. And it allowed me to release the weight and the gravity. And listen, I know that for me, at least my money conversation and and changing that, that's a journey. That's an ongoing journey. It's not a thing where I just get there and boop, it's done. But every journey requires movement forward. And so you got to take steps. Sometimes they're baby steps. Sometimes they're big fucking leaps. Last night was a big fucking leap for me. The next thing for you to realize, the next thing to help you address this is to understand that, you know what? The fear is 10 times bigger in your mind. Yeah. The fear, the level of discomfort you think is going to happen, the pushback, whatever it is, is so much bigger in your mind because you have this beautiful thing called an imagination. And we have this wonderful thing called an ego. And our ego wants to stay safe and our ego wants to stay comfortable. And so the ego uses the imagination to create these big, scary stories. No, 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 no. If you do that, this is what's going to happen. I guarantee it. And we start to believe those stories. We start to get afraid of things that aren't even real. That's what we do. We start to imagine what could happen. We get so scared of what could happen that that impacts our, our actions today. And when we let that do that enough, it totally sends you on a different trajectory in life. It sends you down a different course in life. You will end up at a different endpoint by doing that again and again and again and again, especially around these taboo topics. So you got to understand that the fear and the ego is going to make the story and the monster seem so much bigger and so much scarier than it actually is. It's never as scary as you think it is when you finally step in. The final thing, the final space I'm holding for you when it comes to addressing these is that you make the decision that nothing in your life is going to be off limits. That if there's a conversation or a topic or a person or an idea that creates some fear within you, that creates some some discomfort and you recognize that it's there and it's not going away, then you view that as an opportunity an opportunity for growth, an opportunity for healing, and ultimately an opportunity for breakthrough. That's the space I'm holding for you. That's where you really break free of so many of the things that are holding you back from living your abundant, loving life, from being the most badass version of you that you possibly can be. It's those fears. They're just like chains. They weigh you down. The more of them that you have, The more chains are on you, the harder it is for you to move, the harder it is for you to leap, the harder it is for you to fly. And so when you make the decision that, you know what, I'm going to address this stuff. These things that I've been so terrified over, I'm going to address them. And you know what, there's going to be nothing that I'm not open to talk about. doesn't mean that I'm going to be an expert on it or it doesn't mean that I'm going to feel 1000% comfortable with it, but at least I'm willing to talk about it. That's the space to get to. Like, listen, I don't like going to the dentist. I don't feel comfortable sitting in a dental chair. I get nervous, but I'm going to go for the rest of my life. You know what I'm saying? So you don't have to feel 100% comfortable with these conversations. But what I'm saying is choosing to be open to having them and to step into them anyway, that's the shit right there. That's what you want to play for. Because then there's nothing that really holds you back. Because you realize that you have the choice all along. You have the power all along. And you're complete giving your power away to these things. Giving your power away to those people. Giving your power away to those ideas. And if you think back to the idea of our, our parents and our childhood and our upbringing pass on their taboo stuff onto us, then the shit that you are allowing to hold you back isn't even your own. It's somebody else's. You picked up somebody else's thing and that you just wore it on like an ankle weight And that's keeping you from reaching your heights. That makes no damn sense to me. And hopefully in this conversation, you're like, wow, that makes no sense to me either. I don't want to do that anymore. We don't don't have to be doomed to repeat history. You don't have to be. 
but you will be as long as you keep things taboo, as long as you keep things on a shelf of, I won't address that. And now, as a parent, there are things that I may not talk to Maya about in full detail, give her a thorough breakdown until she's older. But there won't be things that I'll just blanket say, no, we won't talk about. Hell no, I'm not doing that. We'll, we'll talk about stuff and we'll go deep into stuff. But I'll understand her maturity and her ability to grasp concepts. And I'm going to use my imagination to be able to, to share things with her in a way that she can actually understand, given where she's at. And so this goes out to those parents who are like, what are you telling me to talk to my kids about every single thing under the sun and just overwhelm them with the reality of life? No. But I'm saying, don't take those conversations and stick them in the back and say, we're never going to talk about this because mommy's afraid, because daddy's afraid. That's you just passing the same shit right on down to them. Boop. So I, uh, I wish I could get into your your mind and your heart right now to just hear what is rattling around. Because I guarantee there's something. I know there's something. And that's awesome. That's awesome. Because it means that, boom, the doorway to a breakthrough has been revealed to you. It's right there in front of you. And if you listen to this podcast consistently, then I know you're playing for your own abundant loving life. I know you're playing to experience yourself in all the greatness that you know you're capable of. Or maybe you don't know consciously you're capable of, but your subconscious does, otherwise it wouldn't have led you here. And so whatever is rattling around, whatever is having you feel uncomfortable and sweating in your arms and all the stuff right now, just look at it as, okay, opportunity. Just start there. Just look at it as an opportunity. Got it, opportunity. Whew. If I were to choose to, to crack open that door and maybe there's a little bit of growth. Maybe there's a little bit of healing. Maybe there's a little bit of breakthrough. If that's where you can start right now, perfect. Perfect. Because I believe over time, you'll embrace the opportunity. But let's just start at acknowledging it if that's where you're at. Acknowledge the opportunity for your breakthrough. Let's recognize that those things that make us feel so anxious and so nervous that we never want to talk about, that those things are, are sapping us of our power, sapping us of our light. They're just holding us back from truly having it all, truly experiencing the abundance and love that the universe, that God, that source, that all of it just wants to pour onto us. And so let's collectively just say, hey, you know what? We're done with these taboo topics. I'm not going to be that type of person who keeps perpetuating those fears and keeps that stuff spinning. At least in my world, it's going to stop with me. That's the space I'm holding for you. And I love the fact that you hung out with me on this conversation because this is a real one. It's meant to stir up some stuff and that's a beautiful thing. So if you feel inspired to connect with me and share with me what got stirred up with you, I would love to hold that space for you further. I really would. Because nine times out of 10, I've experienced it too. <laughs> and if I haven't, then I can absolutely put myself in your shoes and empathize. So if you want that connection, hit me up, Matthew underscore Bivens on Instagram, mattcbivens at gmail.com. And if you're in the space right now where you're like, I want to address this stuff, I don't really know how. I feel scared. I feel like I need some guidance. I need some help in this, but I do know I want to address it. I'm ready to address it. Then consider working with me one-on-one. -on -one. I can hold it such a powerful space for you in that context of the one-on-one -on -one engagement. It's a beautiful thing. It's what I, I, I have going on right now in my coaching with my coach. It's the reason why I continue to work with a coach, a person who can hold that space for me who can help me to really see myself and see those opportunities. And when I'm scared shitless, he can be there to help guide me through it. That's the space that I'm, I'm wanting to hold for you if that's what you're playing for. And so go for the coaching application, matthewbivens.com slash coaching. Fill it out. We'll set up a time to talk. Because I'm telling you, the sweet, 
The sweetest thing is on the other side of that fear. It's the most amazing feeling in life to experience those breakthroughs. And not just one, but again and again and again. They build, they build, they build. It's incredible. The, the example that I have in my mind, it's like orgasms that keep getting greater. If you could even conceive of that, that's what life feels like for me as I'm stepping through these breakthroughs and leveling up. Yeah, is real. So, I have a couple of coaching spots, and if you feel inspired, head over to matthewbibbins.com slash coaching. We'll set up a conversation. And I love, love, love the fact that you just were so open to dig into some awesome stuff today. So thank you. I'm inspired. I'm going to go continue my breakthroughs. I'm going to continue confronting my fears and my those things that, that have me feeling uncomfortable. I'm going to continue being the example of what it looks like to have it all and holding that space so that you can be the example as well. My name is Matthew Bivens. I love you. Here is to you having it all. Quick note about the Having It All podcast. I am not a doctor nor a licensed therapist. I'm a guy with a story and a passion for conscious conversation. My thoughts, opinions, and beliefs are my own. So please consult with your doctor or healthcare provider regarding any questions or issues you have related to your personal, physical, or mental health.